Like most Asian kids, one of my favorite dishes was anything sweet and sour. So today we're making sweet and sour chicken with pineapple. Hey everyone, I'm Flo, dude is behind the camera and we're all about simple food, simple faith. All written recipes are available to my patrons on Patreon. I'm starting off with two pounds of chicken today and this is about 10 boneless, skinless thighs. And I've already cut them up into about one and a half inch cubes. And we will just put all of that in a bowl. We're using the air fryer today. And because I'm doing two pounds, I'm gonna to have to do this in a couple of batches, I think. This is not all gonna fit in the air fryer. I am super impatient and yeah, if it means I have to do two batches, well, I guess I'll have to do it in two batches. Otherwise they will not be crispy enough. And I'm only doing two pounds of chicken because my family is piggy. I am using one egg. And a couple of teaspoons of soy sauce. We're just gonna stir this up. And we'll let that marinate for a few minutes while I get the rest of my ingredients ready. On second thought, I am gonna add a couple of teaspoons of bourbon. Okay, that was maybe more than a little couple of teaspoons. But only because I'm out of Shaoxing wine still. I'm using one whole onion and I'm just going to cut it into wedges. And four small tomatoes. And I'm using tomatoes instead of what you would typically find in a sweet and sour, which are peppers, but my family members don't like peppers. So don't use what you don't like. I'm just gonna cut them up like that. So each tomato into eighths. I am super looking forward to my garden tomatoes. I only have blooms on them so far, but my first year growing tomatoes, they look pretty promising. I pretty much dredge my chicken the same way I did for General Tso's chicken, lemon chicken, and I like using potato starch because I find that it is, gives me a more crispy um, texture. And potato starch is different from potato flour. You wanna use potato starch. So I'm starting with half a cup of potato starch. I'm probably going to need the whole cup. As I say, I, I don't like when people say, or when recipes say use a full cup of flour or a full cup of starch when you really don't need all that much. But in this case, I think I might. You can always add more. What I find is when they say add a whole cup, I often don't end up using a whole cup. I only use up about a quarter cup and then I end up throwing it all away. And I think that is such a waste. So you just want to lightly dredge them. Okay, I've done about half of them. I'm gonna stir them in the middle of cooking. So I usually stir around the five minute mark and the eight minute mark just to make sure that they are, it's all getting evenly crisped. Okay, my mister is not really working that great, but I'm using some vegetable oil in my mister and it just comes out in a stream, which is fine, I guess. I've tried cleaning it and it just doesn't seem to well, work very well. There are some uh, some of, of misting. <laughs> all right, let's put this in. I'm cooking it at 400 for 10 minutes checking and stirring at the five minute mark and the eight minute mark. Okay, 
Okay, I have my second batch of chicken going. I have my first batch keeping warm in the toaster oven and we're gonna work on our sauce now. So you'll need a wok or a large frying pan. I like using the wok because it's easy to toss all of the meat with the sauce afterwards. Once the wok is smoking, add one to two tablespoons of vegetable oil and add your onions. Whoa! All right, what a smoking hot wok. It didn't take long to get it to smoking hot. Okay, so I'm just gonna stir fry this until I get to the texture that I like it. So I like it a little bit more transparent than this. Okay, that took about two to three minutes. I'm gonna add my tomatoes. Whoops. And drained pineapple. Oh, it looks and smells so yummy already. All right. I love the colors. Yeah, me too. All right, we're gonna add one quarter cup of brown sugar, two tablespoons of oyster sauce. These, you know, they have used the same exact bottle forever. And it just does not come out. You think they'd come up with a better way. It's like worse than ketchup. Three hours later. <laughs> All right, two tablespoons of oyster sauce. Didn't even say what it was. <laughs> All right, half a cup of ketchup. Half a cup of ketchup. And I've got half a cup of chicken broth. And I'm using half a cup of rice vinegar. I just want to stir this really well and let the sauce come up to a simmer. I'm going to smell that vinegar. What about the bourbon? <laughs> The bourbon went in the chicken. There's the chicken. Oh, I see the crispy edges. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's like totally simmering now. So two tablespoons of cornstarch, about a tablespoon of water. And it has to be cold water, otherwise cornstarch will not dissolve. And I'm just using cornstarch because it's habit you want to use the potato starch instead, you can do that as well. Make sure it's all dissolved so it doesn't like chunk up in your sauce. I'm turning this one down. Try to make a, if you can, in the center, try to make a little hole. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> and pour in your slurry. Give it a stir. Open up the sauce. See how that sauce is thickened up now? You want it to thicken up so that it coats everything. And I'm gonna turn the heat right off now. Cause it is starting to simmer. I don't know if you notice. I did see some bubbles. Oh my goodness, that looks so yummy. Are you all ready for? Yes. The taste. Hey guys, how's it going? Yum. Oh, it's steaming. What does that mean, guys? It means hot. I'm hot, it's gonna burn. <laughs> Especially the, uh, the pineapple, right? Oh my goodness, terrible. You know, since you got your air fryer, the food and the recipe flexibility that it's given you has been pretty good. But let's not kid ourselves. It's not deep frying. And I know you're not gonna deep fry anytime soon. You know, I have a friend who got a, uh, I think 10 quart 
fish fry deep fryer for the outdoors. I think we need to arrange some time sharing on that fish fryer. There goes nothing. Mm, it's got that zing from the vinegar and the other ingredients. How can I liken it to the sweet and sour in the restaurants? Well, first of all, it's not nuclear red. Second of all, it's not as ultra sweet as it is in a restaurant. So you still have that um, very much the strong connection to the sweet and sour you get in the restaurant, but it's home style for real. Get in there. <laughs> Mm. That's it. Thanks, dude. Mm -hmm. It's not exactly like takeout because it's not nuclear red and super sweet, like dude said, but it's more nutritious. You know exactly what goes into it and it's super easy to make. Don't stop trying new things. It's faster for you to make this at home than to even pick up the phone and call one of the delivery services. This one will definitely be in the next cookbook coming later this summer. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more like this, I'll see you over there.